Well, good morning. This is the morning of the 20th. And I had to stop and think. This is Monday morning, and it's a hot one. It's about 8.30 out here, and we are already, like, sweat rolling off of us. This is Diva's Kids. So this morning, I promised to get you a video that doesn't make you seasick. My son, went, grandson was so excited about helping with the videos and uh, when I saw that camera jerking back and forth and up and down, I thought, oh, holy moly. So, <laughs> but had to put it on. You know how that is with grandkids. Can't hurt their feelings. It, well, at least it, not on that point. Um, so Vanessa got weights for me. And now my husband's going to buzz up the road on the four-wheeler and, and get, well, he won't be close to us, I guess. But he's going to come zooming up through here in a minute. These guys are five weeks old today. And I don't even know if we'll be able to see their collar colors, but we'll try. Um, the black female with the neon pink collar, 9058, is three pounds, four ounces. The black and white female in here with um, has the, the neon green collar, 9057, is 3.35. The blue merle female with the pink leopard print, which I hear her new mom is super excited she got a neon print collar because I hear that her new uh, fur kid she's going to keeps track of everything else that we do and all the color collars and the parents and she's becoming a historian on my kennel. So kudos to you for remembering all that. So, let's see, uh, she is 3.25 with the pink neon polka dot collar. The blue and merle party female with the blue and green spot collar is 9053. She weighs 3 pounds, 8 ounces. The black male with the light blue collar, which is 9052, weighs 2 pounds, 14.5. And uh, they're very active. We told you they would be this week. And let's see, the blue merle female with the, well, okay, now why do we have, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I screwed that first one up. So the, let me go on, then I'll go back and tell you why. Now we're on the blue merle party female with the pink and black polka dots, 9069, four, two pounds, 14.5. That's the little girl that is a historian on my kennel. She's the one that I sent kudos out to that knows all the moms and who's related to who. And she was super excited that her puppy got the um, the pink polka. She's sitting there looking right up at us. Right there, I think, is the one. Yep, I hear you. I hear you. All right, so the other one I said first had the pink leopard print. I made a mistake. So, the next one is the black female with the purple and the collar that says woof on it, which you'll never be able to read at this point, is 9059, is 2 pounds, 13.5. The chocolate merle party in here is uh, the male, royal blue collar, 9054, 3 pounds, 2 ounces. And you may have to go that direction because I see both of us here. I think we're going to split. We're going to... Not, yeah, yeah may, I was going to let you, never mind. Um, 9054 is 3 pounds, 2 ounces. And the last but not least is the blue merle male with the light blue collar with woof woof on it. 9056, 2 pounds, 10 ounces. All right, so I'm not getting in with these guys today. I thought today you just needed to watch them play. And with me sitting here, I'm about two and a half foot from their kennel. I'm sitting on the edge of the picnic table because I thought I'm just not staying. I'm sweating like crazy out here. We had 105 heat index yesterday, which I know all you people in Alabama and Georgia are going, oh, that ain't nothing. Well, it is something up here. <laughs> We're not used to it. So Vanessa and I are already sweating like crazy. And I thought we'd do this early this morning because it's going to be just stinking hot out here. So let's see if we can find some collar colors. Everybody can spot, spot, everybody can spot the parties and the merles and you know which one's yours. So the blacks and the light blues are tough. So the pink polka dot collar is right there. You can just catch a glimpse of that pink. 
the one with the yellow duck, I think, is the one with the light blue collar that says woof woof on it. And the pink polka dot puppy has the rattle toy. And let's see, where is... Maybe I'm wrong on that one. It is so hard to tell. Hey, Vanessa, can you come pull collars? I can't tell in these little merles. I'll, I won't get you in it. Just get your arms in it. So this one is the pink leopard. All right, that's the pink leopard spotted collar, which means this one should be the pink polka dot. Oops, I'm doing as bad as my grandson. Okay, there we go. That's the pink polka dot. Is that the pink polka dot? Yep, pink polka dot. And this one is the woof woof. So now we got the black. That one needs your, needs your collar fixed. She's got it way too big on her. There's the light blue collar black puppy. There's the neon pink and then catch the purple. It's got an issue with its collar. That's got the purple collar. All right, we hit them all. So that's the story on everybody's collars. They are getting really, really active. They're getting really busy. And, oh, I made noise with the table. They go, what is going on? So they are completely eating dry dog food. They're still with mom. Um, they're gonna come up to the house starting next week. So, oh my golly, I can't believe that's already. So, um, they're doing really good. They really are. They're very social. They're very uh, attentive when we show up. They love seeing people. They love how people pet them. If you were to ask me personalities in here, honestly, there's not a whole lot of difference. There truly is not. I swear, this is a breed that I have always said. You can put them in a dark room, put them in a bag, reach in, swirl your hand around, pick one out, and you'd have the same from A to Z except for the color. Um, a lot of what we do here travels on with them home with you. So the no bark, the no bite, and the no lick training that we do here make the world a difference. I think the biggest thing that we do that makes the biggest, biggest difference in their life and yours is we teach no bark. Um, and we'll explain it to you when you come because it truly does work. If you do not treat these guys like babies... If you do not coddle them, and I know they're fun, they're fuzzy, they're adorable, and it's really hard not to do, but you can't make them your best friend all day long. They need, they need, see this one is really listening to me. So she's like her mother, she listens to everything. Uh, and she says, now I'm just gonna chill. So the biggest thing with these guys is you've gotta set down rules, boundaries, and limitations. If you don't do it, you are gonna pay for it. And then at five months old, you're going to say, I can't stand this. I can't stand this. Well, you kind of create, you're getting a blank page with these puppies. You are going to create their story. Well, that's good. You're going to create their, what passes with them. Are you all listening to me? I see you very, got very quiet. You are going to pass on to them the traits that you give them. So... If you roughhouse with them all day long and you're never calm and quiet with them, you're not going to have a calm, quiet dog. And, you know, I tell people that are single or older people that you're going to have a much calmer, much quieter dog because there's no little kids in your house. If you have little kids in your house, don't tell me you're going to have a calm dog because they're going to take on the atmosphere of your household. Um, I would not put these in your bedroom. No matter how warm and fuzzy you think that is, don't put their crate in your room. Let them learn to be independent. You can turn one of these into a freakazoid schizophrenic if you keep them with you all the time, take them with you all the time. You've got to leave them in their kennel and let them learn to be by themselves or they never will be happy by themselves. So those of you that work or hope to go back to work if all this stuff goes away, and the world gets back to some kind of normal. Do I think we'll ever be back to our normal? No, I don't. So it's kind of like, I'm older, I don't like changes, and I sure don't like this. But, you know, it is what it is. And the puppy is that way also. So leave them at home, put them in their crate. Don't feel like you're killing them, leaving them in there for six hours if you go to work or go to the grocery or go to the movies. 
So, you're really, really starting with an open book. You're the one that's going to fill the pages of this puppy's life. How you fill it is your decision, and what you get out of this puppy as an adult is also your decision. If you bought a puppy to give to your children and they're going to raise it, you're not going to have a good dog. This is like getting another child, or if you're an empty nester, you're getting another child. So, please, if you have the time, also do an obedience class. It's great for you, it's great for the dog, it helps you bond with the dog. Um, and they are wonderful dogs, they're too smart. Sometimes they're smarter than their owners. And I hear it from so many of my clients, how smart they are, how quick they learn. And I have a client, her name is Lynn, and she's on the Puppy Parents page. You should watch what she's done with Gyro. Gyro is the dog's name, and I'll tell you what, she has got him trained. There's a couple of our clients, but Gyro comes to mind first. One lady clicker trained her puppy in the first 15 days to do seven tricks. And I do not think she spent all day with it because she also, I think, has children. So, um, they're great puppies. I'll give you more information next week and the week after as we do this. But training and how you treat them when they go home. They're not babies. Don't coddle them. These guys are piranhas on four feet. And they're going to know if you're weak enough that you can't teach them to do the things they need to do. They're going to do the things they want to do. So, but they're great fun. They're great puppies. They've got wonderful coats. Everybody's got a good bite. Nobody's got a hernia. Nobody's got anything at this point. And I've always loved Diva's babies. And this is just another great group of kids from Diva. So enjoy your puppies when you get them home. Uh, we're only about three weeks and three and a half weeks away from going home. So they become vet Vanessa's and our my chore and Brittany's chore starting next week. So on their six week birthday, Diva's gonna have had it with these guys. Um, she's probably starting to get a little cranky with them now. Vanessa's shaking her head, yes. Um, I can't imagine nursing this many puppies. So, yep, and we may pull a couple off. You know, if she's starting to bite them, uh, they may come off a couple days before their six week, but. Um, they're eating dog food like great, and they've got, we're starting them on cottage cheese and their vitamins they've been on, um, so they're on their way to a great start. I know, and you're whining. Please do not feed canned dog food while it's in my brain. Leave the canned dog food at the store. It is horrible for your dog. Dry dog food. Don't put anything on it. Don't put milk on it. Don't put broth on it. Don't put gravy on it. You will give your dog pancreatitis. So dry dog food. Um, we'll talk about dog food more in the next week or so. We'll talk about dog food when you come. I am going to try and put a dog food video on, uh, cause I have so many people asking about lots and lots of things and what to get your dog. And so we're going to try and get you a video together that, um, you know, we'll let you see what we feed. Uh, cause I don't feed a food that's easily, readily, readily, easily available. Oh my God, that's a mouthful. But, um... We feed a 30-20 dog food, 30 protein, 20 fat. I do not feed a dog food that's called puppy food. Um, I do have puppy food available. I know my dog food prices. The my, my dog food guy just told me the dog food's going up. I've got several ton of it being delivered in the next week or so. Um, I would also advise you, depending on what the grocery stores and your feed stores do, I would find a dog food now that you think is appropriate. Purita Pro Plan is a good dog food. I don't really bark about any dog food in particular, but that's one that's close to what I'm feeding. I feed high standard. You can start looking for it if you want, but it is very hard to find. Uh, box stores do not sell it. It's sold in feed stores or grain mills only. I'm going to get out of here. It's four, four, uh, We're almost 30 seconds away from the end of this video before YouTube shuts me off. So have a great day. I hope you've enjoyed seeing Diva's kids. I hope I didn't make you seasick. And have a great week. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call. Talk to you later.